Okay, so hello everyone. Um, great to meet you um, at a distance um, as we <laughs> truck on during this pandemic. And today I'm going to actually talk to you about the pandemic and what's been happening uh, locally in Los Angeles. So this is the genomic epidemiology of the Los Angeles outbreak. And so this is work done in a huge collaboration with the clinical lab and pathology and uh, Yi Yin, a new PI in human genetics, uh, along with Longhua uh, Gu, who's a um, postdoc in the Krugak lab, who did all the lab work. So I don't want to take credit. I only just analyzed the data. Um, and so kind of to understand the genomic epidemiology of SARS, right, one thing we can do is sequence these, uh, the genome. It's about 30 kilobases in length. Uh, and, uh, you know, about two mutations accumulate per month on average. So there's, you know, you can do phylogenetics to some extent with the viruses, and maybe we can, maybe we can sequence some genomes from LA and learn something about the outbreak. So we did that. Uh, we sequenced them with two methods, vSeq, which is a method we uh, came up with to do the sequencing, but that's a separate talk. And then also this uh, kind of commercial kit. Uh, and we managed to, uh, we sequenced uh, in total 160 genomes, but 142 were from unique kind of patients. Um, and so the kind of what we can do is we can take these uh, genomes um, and there's a large database of uh, these uh, SARS, uh, SARS genomes out there now. And we could just do standard phylogenetic clustering and kind of have a look at where the LA genomes sit in the tree. And so that's exactly what I've done here. So I actually took the 142 genomes we generated from UCLA Health, where there's 144 that were publicly available in this database. And then took these 286 and clustered them together with uh, 3,809 genomes from around the world that are kind of available, broadly represented. And our LA genomes, these little uh, uh, square triangles, I mean, so little triangles, not square triangles, these little black triangles show us the positions of the LA genomes across time. And one thing you can note is that the LA genomes are kind of distributed throughout the tree. And that's kind of consistent with uh, multiple independent introductions, which is, you know, broadly true of most large metro areas with, uh, you know, international travel and domestic travel, right? That the people were bringing in the virus from all over the place. Um, and so we, we did something a little more formal and we just did a, a maximum parsimony analysis where we take the nodes, uh, we label the leaves of the tree by whether they're LA or non-LA and then try and infer for the ancestral state of the nodes. Um, and so from that, we're able to identify 34 introductions into Los Angeles County. These are drawn in red stars here on the, on the tree from before with some modifications. Um, and, you know, most of these uh, are pretty small, you know, only involving one or two genomes, but there's this one large cluster uh, that actually involves 66 LA genomes, which I've zoomed in on uh, blue here. Um, and for most, uh, samples, uh, you know, there's no evidence of community transmission, but we have to remember there's been hundred, there's been over 100,000 cases tested in Los Angeles and we're only sequencing a few hundred genomes. So like we're very extremely sparse sampling of the thing. And so what we did is we took these uh, introductions and uh, basically just by a majority rule approach, something pretty simple, we can assign each introduction to like a clade. So there's like this nomenclature for assigning clades. And what I've done on the left here is uh, placed in time the different introductions that happened into Los Angeles County from this like parsimony analysis. And you can kind of see this B.1 lineage, this orange one, looks like it's pretty became pretty common. Um, and something interesting to kind of note, and this is more qualitative, I think, than quantitative, is to look on the right and look at these different other hotspot regions and the genomes that came from those. And you can kind of see a little bit of everything in Los Angeles. So you can see some of New York with this B.1 lineage, just as this European lineage with this mutation in the spike protein, uh, you can, which you know, is related to the Italian lineage. You can see some of uh, uh, something from that looks like Wuhan. And so I think this is consistent with what we expect from Los Angeles and large metro that the, you know, we're a diverse city, a lot of diverse people and a lot of people coming in and out and traveling around. And so our outbreak is, you know, uh, has been, you know, shaped by that in a lot of ways, uh, very similar to other large metro areas. So something we were kind of interested in, sorry, remember I told you about this large blue cluster uh, of, uh, you know, 66 genomes that seem to cluster together representing something of a large community spread. Um, so we wanted to see well, if we could learn something about that lineage from the genomes. And so what we did is we looked at the lineage of this and it's a B143 and that's actually a USA specific lineage. So the mutation that distinguishes it from B.1 happened in the United States. And it's most common in California and Washington state uh, with, you know, a kind of a center on, um, with kind of a center around Los Angeles. Um, and so, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> um, 
And so what we want to do is see if we could use the genetics or the, the sequencing of our different strains to try and learn something maybe about the origin. Um, and with, there's still some experiments outstanding, but I'll kind of talk to you where we're at and what we're trying to learn still. Um, and so we took all these, uh, you know, B.1.43 strains from the U across the US and we clustered them all together. And something we found is that the, the B.1.43 strains that you find in Washington state differ from the ancestral sequence by one mutation, um, which is this 2244C. Uh, whereas the strains found in California and a few in Utah share the ancestral sequence. So I think we can say from these mutational signatures that, you know, this and kind of the geographical patterns that, you know, the strain that started this spread within the United States kind of originated in California or Utah. Uh, we actually have some pretty early samples that we think might be B.1.43, uh, but we've been struggling uh, with, uh, you know, technical issues getting genomes out of these kind of earlier samples although there's some hints that that might be the case. And so kind of ongoing work is to continue to try, try and get genomes out of really early samples, like kind of the end of February, we have a few samples that we'd really like to get genomes out because we think this could clarify the origin of these and potentially with travel history kind of pinpoint the epidemiological kind of root of these different outbreaks. And so, yeah, and something just to kind of finish up on, um, I've got about 30 seconds left, I think. Uh, so we can, for this large lineage, there's this, uh, you know, this ability, you can kind of estimate this reproductive number from how kind of fast it's expanding. Um, and the reproductive number is how many times each, uh, you know, how many, uh, how many people each person infects. And so, you know, when there was no restrictions in Los Angeles prior, prior to March, this was quite high, obviously it was spreading uh, highly exponentially. And so we can actually just look at the genomes and see what do they tell us about the same thing that we, you know, that the case cases obviously told us. And we can see evidence from this lineage that, you know, the reproductive number for this lineage was extremely high in early March, uh, and, but dropped significantly after the safer at more than was in place, which, you know, kind of fits with our expectation that these uh, social distancing measures were effective at reducing the spread of the virus. Um, but it's just kind of an independent way to look at it. Um, and so this is out on BioArchive for people who want to have, have a look, uh, a deeper look. And we're still ongoing. It's still sitting on BioArchive as we kind of like figure out exactly what's going on with these earlier samples. Um, and so that's that. And I'll just thank, uh, I shouldn't thank myself. I don't know why it's on here. I stole this from someone. Uh, I should thank Long uh, and uh, Yi, who did all the work on like this, a lot of the sequencing, and Josh, who's a, a, a postdoc uh, project scientist in the lab, who's kind of critical, it was critical for like getting us all together. There's the kind of COVID testing group. Uh, Jonathan Flynn, Eliezer and Val, if some of them are here today, and then Sean, Omai and Evan from the clinical lab. And I should put Leonard's name on here because that's what's meant to be there instead of my name, but <laughs> I took the slide from him. Uh, from, uh, yeah, uh, cool. And any questions?